Hello, this is Gene. I'm in a different area today, uh, but I'm going to upload this to my uh, political uh, channel, even though I'm in the area I usually talk about movies. Because I'm going to talk about today is Black Mirror. Uh, season 4 just released in the USA on Netflix. I watched, I think, five of them last night, and I, lost, I watched the last one this morning. Uh... Uh, a lot of uh, cringing was going on through all this, and the reason why I put it on this channel is because there's a lot of commentary that has to be here um, that I need to uh, maybe talk about, and then I'll talk about each episode and how I look at that um, from what I talk about in this channel. So I'm probably going to put this under my uh, alt-right topic of the week. Uh, not sure exactly what I'm going to say after that, other than I'm just going to say it's a preview or a review of Black Mirror and uh, how it, it impacts with the alt-right or anti-white rhetoric. So just uh, overall, um, all the shows that I watched, all six of them, were watchable. Uh, some were better than the others. Uh, some of them was, you know, you get to the point where this is more fantasy than not reality, even though what this basically whole thing is is that it's like a maybe 10 or 30 years in the future, and we have these type of... Uh, uh, technologies that we can do things that they do in Black Mirror, and uh, it's what they call the near future, uh, and maybe a, a reality that we might get into. Uh, but there's so much more here than just the idea of uh, technology taking over our life. Uh, the visual uh, images are there is a agenda there, and it's not strange at all that Netflix uh, took over Black Mirror because they're one of the most uh, anti-white or uh, such a uh, social justice warrior type uh, institutes out institutions out there and a lot of their movies that they pay for and to direct or whatever uh, there's an agenda to it so there were six movies or six episodes this year um, <clears throat> all of them have and have a female lead uh, another one that's been forced uh, Recently, I guess, that they want to make sure that uh, women have all the empowerment that they have in these movies. Uh, we just saw with uh, Last Jedi, they basically made every man there as basically a buffoon. And if you're a white man, you were evil. And unfortunately, uh, Black Mirror, which I think is a better uh, put together ser series than The Last Jedi, uh, it falls in the same areas. Uh, it's apparent to me that. There's an agenda here that, to I'm not I'm not going to say the studios are saying you need to do this, but I think that there's something going on here, and we can talk about who's influencing all this stuff. Uh, last night, uh, Sargum Akkad actually had a debate with uh, Richard Spencer, and he got pretty much destroyed in it. And uh, I didn't watch all of it; it became like five hours. But I, I'm on both sides of this. I I've listened to both of them. I'm not a big fan of Richard Spencer, but he still destroyed Sargon Akkad. And it's funny because Sargon, he has all the all his fans, let's say 700,000 people subscribe to him because he's a centrist. <laughs> he won't really put himself on anything out there. He won't uh, stand up for anything. And then when he does it, he gets called out on it. And he finds out that he's, he's not really different than, let's say, people who might support the alt-right. So anyway... I'm going to go through the movies, or the, each episode, I'm going to put my little spin on it and think about how that might affect uh, the alt-right and what we think about it. Uh, overall, I think that clearly this all second, uh, six uh, episodes um, culminated with basically uh, white people are bad and black people never did anything wrong and uh, we have to keep push uh, interrelational inter uh, relationships and that's fall that falls under I don't think that's a real issue per se but it's clearly the globalists want that to happen they want us all to be mixed around so they later on then they can basically rule over us and when I say them I think we know what we're talking about the people that watch my channel on this side know who's behind all this and this we've talked about this and I might talk about at the end I might talk about uh, Tria Blogic and her little debate with uh, Mike Enoch and then that's what I'll change. I'll um, close it out. Now, if I want to rate all of them together, it's unfortunately because none of them were perfect the all the whole way through. 
I, I might I might say that the one that was probably the best um, was probably Hang the G DJ, but it still had the same um, I idea of interracial uh, coupling. Now that's number four, uh, so I won't I won't talk too much about it. But I want to start with the first one, which I thought was a very good uh, opening act. And the only issue I had with it, it was uh, what was it? The USS Callister. Uh, it was a take on uh, like Star Trek. But what what this? Uh, even though it was a very well put together, a good good storyline, I did like how it ended. And uh, basically, what he what they did there is they took the white guy that's sitting in his basement that becomes smart, fame or or smart but smart, and he makes his companies and because nobody really respects him uh, in his mind he, he has to do something about it and he takes it over the top and he takes uh, uh, digital images or um, entities into the game that he's uh, famous for doing and uh, that he watched and, uh, and he, uh, what we do is we end up giving the, the, the digital cap copies being humanity um, and all there's maybe one or two times in the entire uh, episode that they say that he needs help. Nobody really talks about how he got to that point. I mean, we all we see the aftermath of the fact of him, his greatness to actually build uh, these type of companies, and people come out and basically leech off of him, and his social um, acumen is not very high, and people end up stepping on him. And this is this is what people do that don't have the ability to basically fight back. They might fantasize that they might do something like we all do. If something happens to you and you feel that you don't have any power, you might finance or finance. You might uh, have a, fi a fantasy that you're going to get them back. Uh, but in the in the uh, episode, there's. It, I think it didn't take enough of that to show his descent to this area where it became more power. I don't think before all this happened, when he was uh, building this code for that made him a you know famous or a multimillionaire that he was that type of person. I think that when he had actually was had to be out there with normal people and people in, in public uh, in his in his uh, company, he realized that these guys were just there to basically use him. And when they knew they could do that, they continually do it. And what I didn't like about that movie or that uh, episode is that um, those type of people won at the end. And at the end, he was a monster. And I guess he probably needed to be uh, taken out of the, you know, taken out the back and shot. But... Uh, they only talked. They only talked about it maybe 15 seconds of the entire uh, episode. That said, "Hey, you need help." And there were a couple times that guys were talking to him. You could see that his, his humanity was coming back, but he was too far gone. And of course, at the end of the movie, it was a female that saved everybody. And I, there was a whole lot of little things about the uh, characters didn't have any, um, uh, you know, the um, gen genitals, and at the end they all came back like that was some sort of thing that now you have your humanity, but whatever. It was, overall, I thought it was a really good show. Um, yeah, I would say that probably that was number two for me out of all the six. Um, there was just the whole thing. It's still the female had to uh, save the day. Um, it, it, it wasn't as a vote as some of the other ones, but it clearly was there. But I, under I understand why that was the first one. Uh, it was kind of a heart uh, height. It was uh, not that intense until the end. Um, I mean, obviously the uh, the end was didn't really make any sense. <laughs> you came down to it, but I understand how it works. But it was it was good uh, and a good uh, foray to this season. The next one is Archangel or Archangel. Um, uh, single mother, apparently there's no man here. <laughs> it's like we open up and a woman's on getting ready to have birth. Apparently she can't actually have a a normal um, birth, so she has C-section. And uh, he she has this anxiety about uh, something happened to her kids and technology as it's becoming. Uh, she basically has her kid uh, when she's young to have like an implant to basically know where she's at and knows when something's happened to her. And um, you could see what was going to happen at the end, that no matter what we do, and this is part, that was a good uh, episode because it shows no matter how much we try to protect your kids, that uh, it doesn't really matter at the end. And um, and I did like the end of it, although this, uh, you know, the fact that the 
she, the daughter, ended up beating the shit out of her mom, and apparently she lived at about 15 years old, and she's going on her own. I don't know if this will be a good ending or not, but the idea of the entire movie, there's only, there's no father Victor. The only de decent man is the grandfather, who's basically said, you know, she needs to be on her own or deal with what's coming on with her way, and uh, she shouldn't be having that type of stuff. And, but, but he has stroke, and then he dies later on. And she became, you know, the mom said, hey, probably need to stop this. And But the daughter screws up and doesn't tell her parents. She basically lies to her mom, goes out and, and having sex with uh, somebody when she's 15, and she also wants drugs, and she's asking all this shit. And uh, any normal parent is probably, if they had that type of a device, they'd probably say, well, you weren't home at uh, 1 o'clock. So I went to go on there and you were doing this stuff, like you were almost ba begging me to do this. I'm not saying you should you shouldn't do it. So it gives you an idea of what you might do if you had the technology. And there's no doubt in my mind that we implant um, our dogs with this shit if the, you know, to, if the dogs go running off. You know where they're at. Uh, there's no doubt that we'll do that with our kids at some point. Because the medias make it sound like everybody across the street, especially if you're young and men, if you're a man especially a white man, apparently we're all pedophiles and that you, we have to be, uh, you know, we have to be watched. So I don't necessarily don't stop why she would, I mean, I understand why she would have done it in the, in the, in the op episode. And, um, it's just funny. I don't know what was that was at the end when she beat the shit out of her mom, uh, whether she had a, some sort of underlying diagnosis because there's no other issues in the movie that said that she has that type of that. Um, she had been exposed to shit and she was upset because her mom watched it, but that was her re reaction. I think it was a bit much. Um, but anyway, it, it, it's still, it's showing the virginal female just being able to go out and just be on her own at 15 years old. And I don't know if what is at the end of that episode, is it, is it the, uh, a good thing? I don't think so. I think that she probably ends up getting killed in some way. Or uh, she'll be on drugs because apparently she liked that shit. So anyway, it doesn't matter what we do. I mean, you can't... I mean, the whole thing about that is you can't really protect your kids 24-7. Um, but just, I think that out of all the episodes, I think that's something that might actually happen. That uh, Other than the fact of, you know, the whole making the DNA better so people don't have diseases. But I think we'll have trackers and stuff as well. Um, I, I, it'll happen. Maybe not in my lifetime, but it'll definitely happen in my kids' lifetime. The next one after that was Crocodile, which probably the most, out of all of them, was probably the most uh, unbelievable. Um, it started it started off with uh, two people in a car uh, about 15 years ago in, in the storyline. They're just driving to this really nice, I don't know if it's Norway or something like that, beautiful area, but of course it's mountainous. And they're out drink or... Um, I don't know if they were drinking, but they were smoking shit, and they they killed uh, somebody who was on a bike, so they covered it up, and then we f fast forward, and this woman, apparently, who was just basically a drugger, druggy, now she's the greatest ar architect of all time, and she's, everybody knows her name, and she has a nice house, has a family, but you don't really see the man in this at all, you don't see, uh, you see the boy, uh, but it's, the man looks like a beta male, not that that matters, uh, but, you know, uh, she's going to do a speech, and then this, she, she witnesses an, an accident, uh, some, uh, thing run over somebody, and some insurance person gets involved, but during that time, the person that actually was with her in the car comes up, and they, uh, she said, he basically says, I have to tell uh, the, the the wife, what happened, you know, I, I'm going through reco recovery and I have to do this, and and somehow she kills him <laughs> with a bottle. You don't see that the bottle is actually uh, broken in any way. Apparently she hits the bottle inside his whatever. And then she has the ability, this woman is probably 5'5", five, five maybe, weighs 90, mile, 90 pounds, and this is where it becomes very unbelievable. She She basically carries him. Uh, puts him on a thing, gets downstairs. That I could see she'd probably do. She had one of those carts that you have on uh, uh, room service. But she gets in her car, and she gets to a, where one of the places she's building, I guess. And she's cr she's actually carrying him through the stove up and down shit, and then pulls off like a, a manhole cover, 
and <laughs> throw him into it uh, to you know basically so that nobody knows because obviously if he gets if he tells somebody it might come back to her and she's trying to protect herself so it could basically uh, spirals out of control uh, this whole insurance thing comes up somebody's looking around they see you and saw her in this thing and how they did all that stuff looking at your brain and you actually can find out your memories and stuff they find her watching the accident. Eventually, she talks to the first, uh, the insurance industrial comes out and talks to her. And they find, she looks in her brain and she sees what happened that she killed a person and she kills that person. And it continually goes down the rabbit hole and she ends up going back and kills her husband, the insurance industrials, and also the baby. Now, in this one, we had the only one that was actually not all um, mixed racial, racial shit. She was married to a white guy, and she had a white, a white kid, um, the killer. Uh, but then you had an Indian girl and, a, and a, um, a black man when they were put together. Um, so it's just, it's all woven through this entire um, series. And uh, wh why? <laughs> it's like, and I'm thinking where they're at, how many Indian and black people are up in that part? It almost looks like it's a North Pole somewhere. It's so North, uh, I have to look where they actually filmed it. Uh, but again, this is like fantasy. It it could be that way. You could have it, um, people like that. But you're not going to see that anyway. Um, so she continually kills everybody, and then at the end she gets it um, like a little uh, rodent that was one of the pets actually sees her, and it's in her brain, and they figured it out, and they get it. And she just she's taken away. Now this one, I guess, is one that they had all the a lot of people liked it. A lot of people didn't like it. Uh, I, it it cooled it um it kept it kept my attention. It was just so unbelievable the physical shit that she had to do in that movie. Um, uh, one part other than the fact of actually carrying a guy that's twice her, her weight through snow up and down hills to get it to a place, or then uh, killing the uh, woman at her house. You know she's the girl's trying to leave in her car. She's in the car and she opens up the car, and uh, she just basically. Over overpowers her, like this other woman had no chance to fight back. I mean, a very small woman. I I don't understand it, and the fact, and then she kills her husband who's sitting in a, in a tub, and she get he gets hit one time with a with a thing, and he sits and looks at her. I'm like, I'd be, dude, unless you killed me the first one, <laughs> I'll be getting out that thing and kick the shit out of you. But anyway, it was just kind of unbelievable. And um, okay, let's go to the next one, and this one I think was the shortest one. It was called, uh, no, this is the good one um, of all of them, it was Hang the GJ. Um, I think it was very relevant how it comes to the adding, uh, the dating apps and how that works. Uh, but it still had to have the agenda that it was the a very whitest dude with a black girl at the end. And at the end of the day, they ended up together. But uh, it was the one that actually said that there was some sort of uh, happy ending. But we don't really know at the end. But it's uh, very relevant when it comes to the, I mean, obviously when I was growing up, we didn't have any dating apps or anything like that, that you can just slide, sli swipe somewhere and say, I'll take her. And then it was interesting how they do that. And I don't want to spoil it that much. I mean, I didn't spoil the other ones, but that one's probably the best one. Prop, one that you can watch without getting too upset or whatever. But there's still an agenda there because every one of these, they're, they're showing the female as the lead. And if they have a chance, they definitely show... Um, that white people in a negative light, and it also shows that you have to be uh, interrelational together. So, it's a good one, probably the best one of all of them. Um, but that's just my personal opinion. I think it's, I think that most people are rated at number two. Um, a lot of people like uh, the first one, the U.S. Callister. Uh, a lot of people got it five out of five. I, you know, it's, it's a good, but anyway. The one after that is the shortest one of all of them. That's the Metal hammer, metal head, and uh, it's kind of a strange one, but it, apparently it's all black and white, and it's still a fe female lead. Um, the two guys are going into a house to get something, and I think it's, I don't know if it's the same, I mean, you have to watch the whole series, but it, it looks like they're looking to get some teddy bears or something for something you don't really know, and uh, of course, she goes in there, and the guys go in there, and they all get killed at some point during the the opening scenes, but somehow she gets through all this shit, <laughs> apparently, 
and uh, she can't. She tries to call people, but no one's going to come get her. And there's a reason for that. This guy, they put little trackers in you. There's these little dogs, these uh, robot dogs. They're obviously they're lethal. Lethal. If you watch the the series, you know it's. I mean, it's a very the very lethal lethal type of thing. So somehow this is happening that humans have best just basically built all this shit and that they've said they're going to kill any other humans that come around. And um, there's not just one, unfortunately. She At the end, she uh, goes through all the shit and she actually kills one. But at the end, while well, the guy where this thing is dying, the dog or whatever you want to call it, uh, releases more things up in the air and it comes at her and goes in, in, embeds into her face and also into the their uh, her arteries and stuff so she can't really take these out without killing herself and that's what we show her it looks like she's going to kill herself and then it pans out and you'll see that because the trackers are on her they're coming together and there's like a, a line of these dogs we don't really know where that comes from and i don't know if it's other humans that are behind these dogs or the dogs have been programmed years and years ago to now come to the point where if they see a human they're going to kill it so it's possible that they something happened, but we don't really know. It's a sh it's a short one, and uh, I, you know, it, it was a good one. You know, it, it would be nice to know more. Uh, but if you did that, you might have to know. That might be in like almost like a movie uh, length. It was only like forty mi minutes. Um, overall, it was good. Uh, maybe the weakest of all of them, um, but it was okay. And then the last one is Black Museum. Now, obviously, you know that there's going to be some sort of racial shit here causing the Black Music Museum. And overall, the the, uh, the entire episode was well put together. Um, I don't really want to go through all of it, um, but still, it showed the white guy being, at the end, being evil, even though it made the first, he might have been good. And it was a white guy that did all these bad things and got... His coming, his coming up at the end. At the end, it was a female. There was a black female that had to have her revenge uh, at this idea that her father didn't actually kill anybody, and they were talking about protests. Sound like that this was a um, a nod to Black Lives Matter, that basically b black men don't do anything bad. That uh, that what we've been told all along that it's white black people are not are not bad they're great or something um they talk about dna and all this stuff it's strange that this was a um time that there was a lot of technology that they grew all the stuff with ai but they didn't have any dna for this other guy uh but uh, it appeared it, they try to make it sound like this guy was just being falsely accused and all that good stuff um Anyway, overall, like I said, the series went down for me. Uh, I think it took another notch up or down, what do you want to ever say, for SJWs. And there's an anti-white, um, pervasive uh, issue that's going through it. But that's normal for all the shit that's coming out now. You can't really watch anything anymore without that. And this is the thing that, you know, I don't blame uh, our, uh, our, uh, our Tina Anita Sarkeesian. But she made some uh, a very a suit uh, observation when she said she became a feminist and an intersexual, intersexual <laughs> uh, feminist. And she says when you when you when you woke open up your mind and you realize that everything is either racist or sexist that you have to point it all out. That she so she had her own little whatever you want to call it. It's not a, a red pill movement or awakening. It was a feminist awakening. So, you can't, it's just there. So, when you've actually, when your eyes have been open, awoken, awoken, that you see it. And you can't normally be able to stand back and say, I'm going to let it go past it. I did this, and I'm, this is where I'm going to get back to Last Jedi. And I don't know what I was, so I was going to talk about. Oh, uh, Tree of Logic. And I'll talk about um, what happened with the Sarvagon, but all that shit. But... There were a couple of movies that came out that clearly had uh, feminist uh, overtones and a little of a globalist agenda, some of it anti-white. But I like uh, The Force Awakens. It wasn't as pervasive. And then Rogue One, not so much, but it showed more global, the globalist shit. Everybody had a different race in it. 
and all the white people were getting knocked out, <laughs> and all these little people, were, all these little small girls were knocking out guys. So, I mean, it was there, um, but they just went uh, so SJW, so anti-white in Last Jedi. It's clear that Disney, Disney is behind that, and when you know who's, who runs this, then you, you go down that rabbit hole, and you know what it comes from, and that leads to what they were talking about, the Tree of Logic and Mike Enoch, and what Rich Spencer and um, Carl Benjamin was talking about. They're all related. Um, the thing is, Carl is the, the quote-unquote de facto leader of the skeptic movement. And he's not really that. He's just a centrist. And these people don't have any... I, I Actually, when it comes down to I have more respect for somebody that's a feminist, like Anita Sarkeesian, that will... It follows her ideology down to, you know, to the very, very core of it and believes it. She believes in tech, toxic masculinity. I, I believe that men are different than women. I don't think there's any toxic about it. I think that if you have a good if you have a good father in the home and a good mother at home, that most of the shit that men deal with, uh, with the violent shit, would be quelled. Uh, you just can't say that single mothers has not been an issue, and and why men are doing things that they do. Uh, but so she thinks that men have to be changed and teach us to to do different. I think differently than that. But she's will stay here with their own ideology. She, but these other people who are centrist, these skeptics, they'll go either way. Uh, they have no, they have no foundation for their beliefs, and why Carl and any other people of a skeptic person will will always lose to somebody who is somewhat articulate in the alt right because we have a foundation. We know who created Western civilization. We know that we're the ones that got to the moon. Just. Richard Spencer said this last night, and Carl was just like couldn't understand. He couldn't understand why, and then, and he made he made the correct uh, assumption uh, that was never going to happen in Africa. <laughs> uh, Liberians were not going to all of a sudden decide that they were going to have uh, uh, rockets that go to the moon. They, you have there is some there's a difference between the races. There's all of us. There's a, there's a there's a difference in, in the culture and the race, and I think that. Our culture is um, is uh, related to race. Now, you can change, okay? You can have what we have in, this, in the United States, this Western cultural and how, how we kind of like defined, uh, defined it as Americanism, stuff I've talked about on this can, uh, channel before. Um, so I, won't, I don't believe in an ethnostate because I don't think it ever would happen. But I definitely am for limited immigration and all that stuff that most of the people in the alt-right are for. Um, individually, you can have relationships with, from other races. There's no issues with that. But the issue, again, when it comes with all this stuff is if anybody can talk about this and nobody's going to say shit about it, but the time a man who's white starts talking about shit like this, immediately we have to be shut down. I get shut down at home about it. And I'm taught that because I've changed that it's destroyed my relationship with my wife. And I'm like, really? I'm just, oh, I, I want to defend Western civilization. Or uh, if I think that women have, have basically had everything given to them the last 40 years, and the proofs are right there, doesn't mean I'm against women. But, you know, the, it's one of those things, like, if I talk about men's rights issues, now I'm, I'm oh, I'm, you're just about men and you hate women. But if you say things, oh, but women in the Middle East are going through shit right now, I'm like, well, where are the feminists right here? Do anything. They're not doing anything. They're just laughing at it. But anyway, I'm, I'm going off uh, topic. Anyway, uh, all, this, all this is really done, especially with the Richard Spencer and Carl Bennett, Benjamin, is apparently more people are, are watching this stuff. And we're never going to get to the point where everybody's going to be like, the, it's not going to be that. All this is is just... Understanding where we come from, defending that, uh, be progressive in that, but always remember where we came from because you just can't have this nihilistic idea that says that we're just here because we're here. There is a difference. And you can accentuate the greatness of the black race or, or the ageist race or whatever. 
and but we should also we should we also would also uh, celebrate the fact that those who have European descent should be allowed to celebrate that to protect it and not be vilified for it. And when the media is vilifying us every day, when those who compare to be white on the outside, when they're called out, they say, wait, I'm a Jewish person. And then if somebody who's the alt-right or somebody might say, what? why is always Jewish people doing shit like this? And then everybody calls us anti-Semitic for saying it. But when it's 95% of them are Jewish, and then you listen to what they say in the synagogues, uh, and then the, especially the, the, uh, the lefty uh, Jews... They, dude, they don't, they don't like white people. <laughs> they want to take over, man, and and just one of those things that you just don't want to talk about it, but it's there. And there are so many people that says they're so red pilled and they're so awakened, but to this one area, they won't. Their denial is so deep because whatever is it, the Holocaust, or if you've been taught for so long that the Jewish people have been all always been oppressed, that you just can't get past it. And as smart as some of these other people are, like Tree of Logic is a smart person. She still thinks that, that we're upset with black, with blue, uh, blue, with Jewish people because they're more successful than we are. On the whole, that's all it is. And it's nothing the fact that they have all the influence in our in our country. None of that. You know, if they were really about America first, there wouldn't be an issue. But it's never that way. Uh, the people who are in power, it's always about what we're going to do for Israel. And they should be allowed to say it that way, right? It, it, that means that's their homeland. So I just want to defend my homeland. I don't care what that is. You can say it's here, but you can say where my ancestors came from in Central Europe. Germany, France, Belgium, that's where they're from. I just want uh, <laughs> this idea that, oh, you just don't want because you hate black people. No, I don't. I, I don't want Europe to be gone because it will be gone. And I know it's going to end up here at some point. But anyway, I've been talking way too long. Thank you for watching. And let me know what you think below. If you actually sit around for the last 30 minutes of this, good on you. <laughs> I got most of his rambling. Uh, you know what I have to say. I think it's clear that Black Mirror already had an agenda before it. And they just went to a different level. <laughs> it's more over overtry. But I actually got through all of it. All about five hours of it. Almost six hours of it. Um, it is competent, competent filmmaking, but there's an agenda there, and that's all I'm talking about. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. You guys have a good day.